If you are about to invest in a biodigester, then it's good to know what you're investing in. We look at some schematics to understand the flow of wastewater right after you flush your toilet at home. This video exists because, unfortunately, offsite sanitation systems are quite few in Kenya, and chances of your home being connected to a sewer line is small. Even after investing thousands or millions of shillings into your beautiful home, you'll have to handle your sewage yourself. That means investing in an on-site sanitation system, a system that treats your waste right at your plot. And after doing extensive research, I'm pretty sure you've come across septic tanks and biodigesters. So in this video, we'll talk about the biodigester, which is an alternative on-site sanitation system to the septic tank. You've heard that it occupies little space, needs minimal exhaust services, and on top of that, you can reuse the wastewater for landscaping. But how? How is all of this possible? To answer that, we need to look at the biodigester's design to see where all these benefits come from. And as a disclaimer, because this is going to be a detailed video talking about managing human waste, please don't watch this video if you find such content offensive. Don't say I didn't warn you. With that, I'm Nick Mwema and this is Property Norma. I drew up some schematics to show you the science of biodigesters. This first one shows you the dimensions of a standard size biodigester. It measures 1.8 meters long, 0.6 meters wide, and 0.6 meters deep. A standard size biodigester is designed to serve 10 users per day. This is the size of biodigester you're most likely to install at your home. Now, to really understand the science of a biodigester, we need to look at its lateral cross-section to appreciate its design. That's why we have this second schematic. I'll guide you through how it works step by step. But before we continue, there are three terms we'll need to understand as they'll come in handy in the video. The first term is black water. This refers to human excreta, flash water, and anal cleansing material, which is tissue paper, for example. Black water comes from the flush or poor flush toilet. The second term is grey water. This refers to the wastewater that comes from the shower areas, laundry and the kitchen. It's called that because it's usually grey in colour. The third term is effluent. This is where the black water has undergone some treatment where the solids have been separated from the liquid. This usually comes out of the outlet pipe of the biodigester. A biodigester mainly treats black water, which is all these that I mentioned before. This is actually a major difference in the design between a septic tank and a biodigester, as a septic tank treats both grey water and black water. Should I do a comparison video between the two systems? Let me know in the comments. Coming back, after doing your business and flushing your toilet, what goes into the biodigester is your black water, which as you remember is this. Your black water enters the biodigester through this inlet pipe. Once inside, a biodigester is meticulously engineered for the swift separation of your excreta from black water. This rapid solid liquid separation is made possible by the biodigester's porous filter. The porous filter is a layer of hollow concrete slabs or ballast porous slabs. The idea here is to hold the solids at the top and have the liquids flow downwards through the porous filter. Once the liquids in your black water have flown through the porous slabs, we need to handle the solids. That's where we introduce micro and macro organisms. They will work aerobically inside the biodigester, which means in the presence of oxygen. To make it a conducive environment for degradation for the bacteria and the invertebrates, a layer of bulk material is placed at the top of the porous filter. Materials such as sawdust, coconut husks, wood shavings are good examples. Just ensure that they have low moisture content and are fibrous in nature. Another function of the bulk material is to absorb the harsh chemicals that get poured in with flash water. Good examples are the chemicals or bleach you use to scrub and clean the toilet bowl. After passing through the bulk material and filter layer, your black water now becomes effluent, which as you remember earlier, 
is where the wastewater has undergone some treatment where the solids have been separated from the liquids. What you see here are concrete beams that support the filter layer above. They are lined facing the outlet pipe so that the effluent flows out smoothly. The slope of the land should be tilted towards the outlet pipe so that the effluent flows out of the biodigester via gravity. The effluent will flow towards the soak pit, which we'll talk about in a short while. We have an air gap to allow the foul gases inside to flow away from the biodigester through the vent pipe. It creates a path for gases to escape to the atmosphere, avoiding the potential for foul odors entering your house. The vent pipe also ensures that the biodigester has a constant supply of air, perfect for the bacteria, earthworms, and cockroaches. There are anaerobic biodigesters out there, though those are commonly used to generate biogas for energy. So, to recap this section, after flushing your toilet, your black water enters the biodigester through the inlet pipe. It lands on the bulk material where the solids are trapped and digested by the bacteria, earthworms, and cockroaches. The liquids flow downwards through the filter layer to the concrete beams towards the outlet pipe. A soak pit, also known as a leachway or soakaway, helps to manage the effluent generated in the biodigester. The function of a soak pit is to allow the liquid waste from the biodigester to gradually percolate into the surrounding soil where it undergoes further treatment and is absorbed. This is called secondary treatment of wastewater. Using this schematic I drew up for you, let me show you how it generally works. The liquid effluent, which is relatively cleaner than the initial black water, flows out of the biodigester and enters the soak pit through this inlet pipe here. An inspection port is provided at the top to make it easier to do maintenance works of the pipe. And this is a T-junction. Now, the soak pit is a pit dug into the ground, typically filled with boulders, also known as hard core. The liquid effluent released into the soak pit gradually percolates through this material and into the surrounding soil. As the liquid effluent moves through the hard core and soil, natural processes such as microbial action and filtration help further treat and purify the wastewater. The hard core acts as a natural filter, removing impurities and pathogens. After filling the pit with hard core, a damp-proof polythene layer is placed. This prevents rainwater from seeping into the soak pit. Afterwards, a layer of soil is backfilled to completely cover the soak pit. The soil is then compacted to ground level. Remember the term grey water? It's the wastewater that comes from shower areas, laundry and the kitchen. The soak pit is designed to treat grey water generated from your home, while the biodigester chamber is designed to treat black water only. So. A combination of the biodigester chamber and the soak pit ensures that you're able to effectively treat the sewage you generate at your home. I hope you've gotten that idea clearly. The depth of the soak pit varies depending on the soil's infiltration rate, number of users, and depth of the groundwater table. But it should be a minimum of 1.2 meters deep. Seeding means introducing the organisms that will digest the solid waste inside a biodigester. Organisms here are aerobic bacteria or earthworms for example. The bacteria come in packets which comes as part of the cost of installing the biodigester. You can also buy them separately. For example, a 750 gram packet costs 4,500 Kenyan shillings from Hallmark Biodigesters in Kenya. To add the bacteria, You'll mix it with 10 liters of water, then pour it inside the biodigester. If you're going to use earthworms, you'll need humus, which will act as the initial bedding material for the worms. The earthworms should be installed two weeks after using the biodigester. That's because the worms don't feed on fresh feces. The feces has to stabilize, hence the two-week period of introducing the worms to the biodigester. Cockroaches, on the other hand, usually come in by themselves, attracted by the smells inside the biodigester. So, your biodigester supports a thriving ecosystem where your solid waste, being the food source, is slowly degraded with time by all the organisms inside. 
The biodigester is normally made of reinforced concrete slabs. It can be rectangular or circular in design depending on the installer. I've simply focused on the rectangular design in this video, but circular ones work in a similar way. It should be partially buried to expose the top slab at the surface for easy access to the inspection ports. This is also done to ensure that runoff water from rain doesn't get into the biodigester. In addition, it should be installed next to the last blackwater manhole. This last manhole is a meeting point for all the toilet blackwater pipes in your house, which are these orange ones here. The more toilets you have in your house, the bigger the last manhole size. The inlet pipe is then connected at this manhole, which will direct the black water to the biodigester. A soak pit is installed in areas where the soil is well drained. It should be at least 3 meters away from any building within your compound. In cases where the water table is high or the soil is waterlogged, the biodigester is installed at the surface. Sun filters are connected to the biodigester to provide secondary treatment of the effluent. This will act similar to a soak pit. The vent pipe should extend above your house's roof for proper ventilation. A cap and fly screen should be fitted to prevent house flies from entering and leaving your biodigester. The cost of a standard sized biodigester varies from 75 to 90,000 Kenya shillings depending on location, ground conditions, and your biodigester installer. Routine maintenance checks should be done yearly. Checks for blockages should be done for the manholes, the biodigester chamber, and the outlet pipe leading to the soak pit. In terms of use, the acceptable annual cleansing material is tissue paper. Other cleansing materials will make the solids inside the biodigester to fill up quickly as they won't be digested as easily by the organisms. Toilet cleaning chemicals like bleach or antiseptics should be added according to the instructions on the labels. The flush water will dilute the chemicals as they flow into the biodigester. On the left are the solids you should not put into your biodigester and on the right are the chemicals. These solids won't be digested by the organisms, making your biodigester fill up quickly. On the other hand, the chemicals will kill the organisms, compromising the efficiency of your biodigester. Let's start with the pros. One advantage of a biodigester is that it occupies little land space. For example, the standard biodigester occupies a surface area of 1.08 square meters, and the minimum required surface area is between 1.65 to 2 square meters. The soak pit needs vertical space underground, therefore not taking too much of your compound. The second pro is the efficiency of separation of solid and liquid waste from black water. The solids get digested by the organisms, while the liquids flow out as effluent into the soak pit. Because of a biodigester's efficiency, the third advantage is that it has a projection of getting full within 10 to 20 years. That means you don't incur recurrent maintenance costs of exhaustor services when compared to a septic tank. Depending on how you want your biodigester installed, you can have the liquid effluent reused for landscaping purposes. That helps you conserve the water you use at your home. But this is optional. Now, let's look at the cons. The first disadvantage of a biodigester is its short-term expense. Despite its efficiency of handling your sewage at home, if you don't have the money to get one installed at your home, then it doesn't benefit you. The second con is a limitation on the number of users. A standard biodigester is designed to handle 10 users per day. If more people are present, then a bigger biodigester is needed or more biodigesters are installed. That obviously means you'll incur more costs. Thirdly, because you're talking about aerobic biodigesters, that means they can generate biogas energy. The vast majority of biodigesters in the Kenyan market are primarily designed to handle human waste, which also produces little biogas. To generate biogas, you need anaerobic biodigesters, which work under the absence of oxygen. I'm planning on making a topic on this video, so let me know if you're interested in the comments. The fourth con is that a biodigester system can be abused, compromising its efficiency. If non-biodegradable solids are flushed down the toilet, the organisms won't digest them. If harsh, toxic chemicals are also flushed down the toilet, 
you risk killing the microbes and invertebrates inside the biodigester. Finally, a biodigester requires water for proper use. In areas where water is scarce, a ventilated, improved pit latrine is a more appropriate sanitation alternative. In conclusion, as an upcoming homeowner, there are so many things to consider, from the materials you'll use to build your house to how you'll handle your sewage at home. I would recommend installing a biodigester at your home if you have flush toilets present. I hope this video has shed some light on the workings of a biodigester and a soap pit. They work together to ensure a sufficient sanitation system for your home. For further reading, I'll leave some links in the video's description to articles that made this video possible. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>